Hi friends golfers, Eric Schilberg, EJS Golf, EJSGolf.com. Hope things are a little better now. I uh, hope everyone's well. Um, so let's see, I thought I would talk a little bit um, about feedback. So I talked about motor patterns so the other day. So if we kind of understand motor patterns a bit and how we learn new ones, um, what it takes to kind of um, get a new one in the book near the old one, why they're so valuable to have just for us in general as humans. Um, <clears throat> today, I kind of want to hit what I think is the, you know, the other side of learning as well. Um, feedback. Okay. Um, to me, if you're not using a form of feedback, and I've said this many times, you're just exercising. Okay. And I don't mean that to be rude to anybody. I really don't. Like if you go practice and you, you know, hit a hundred balls and you just stand there and hit them, well, what are you really doing? You're not learning anything, okay? So your mind does not know the difference between these shots that you're hitting, okay? Now, let me, let's take a little, little different route about that of if you, um, there in practice, decide to use feedback. So your mind is working to understand what you're trying to do. So like I always have a mirror right here, right in front of me. So I can look at here and then I'll have video back here to look and see what I'm doing. So every shot, every two or three shot, depending on what I'm working on, I'm checking. Now, if you're trying to really grind something new in block practice at the range, I think you should be checking quite often, okay? So using feedback, I'd like to see a form of a mirror, you know, video, whatever else you have for feedback. Now, so, um, you know, like here, you know, a lot during my lessons, I'll use feedback, like putting, um, uh, alignment stick like this. So, you know, if you're used to coming over the top, we'll have a come like this, and then you got to work your way, you know, underneath, right? So that way, that, that's kind of like, I would say more constraint learning, but it's still a way for you to get an understanding of what you're trying to do, okay? So you have feedback, constraint learning. Um, but, you know, I feel like without any of those, then we really don't have a great basis of what we're doing. So, one drill I really have my students working on a lot is, you know, I'll see this when people come to me. I, it's hard to even, I, I don't know. I mean, I'll see all kinds of weird, you know, pivots, okay? So I'll have people work on it because I find that we have to get our body moving correctly, okay? And I, I feel like everybody can stand here and go like this and pivot correctly. Once we happen to get here, people are like, I don't know how to move my hip. I don't know how to do anything anymore. And you know, they end up way back here, all this type of stuff. So really big to me that we work on this. So what if we don't have a mirror? I'm like, okay, coach, how am I doing today? Am I doing better on this? Cause I'm not back here anymore. I've been really working on it like this now. And I'm not making that up. You may think that's funny and an exaggeration, but it, it's happened not more than once cause they didn't use feedback. So for that drill specifically, I have a mirror right in front of me, okay? So I like to see the pelvis possibly, depending on who you are, some people I don't move, have move off the ball, but if it's more comfortable to move off the ball, your pelvis about an inch, and then kind of recenter by the top. Look at this, when I get to the top and I'm looking in this mirror right now, I can see, okay, you know what? My head is right where I started and then I'm ready to go down here afterwards. So but I can watch in the mirror say I'm okay. Now I can ingrain that move in instead of just making it willy nilly, you know? Um, you know, I guess as, as far as looking in the, and you have video behind you and I'll give you just a few more examples. If you're somebody, bro, if you haven't seen my videos lately, I had thumb surgery. Uh, gosh, we're almost on two months now, but I still can't do much with my left hand. But let's say you are working on your takeaway because you're one that rolls it way in here or something like that. Okay. Which somebody pointed out to me that I do it too much in my swing and <laughs> which I thought was kind of funny, but, um, let's see. So you worry on this. So if I have a mirror behind me, I can check it in here or video. I said, okay, how am I doing? Pretty good position there, right? It's a great draw. I like doing for it. And then you just kind of grab it here, but see, I can't really do that with my hand. <laughs> so, that's another way to do it, okay? So there's your feedback and how to use it. So you have feedback, 
And I think I'll do another video when we talk maybe more specifically on just using, um, you know, constraint led approach um, training, which, you know, I love too, the way we learn. So with feedback, I say this, okay? So one of my ten tentacles I think of teaching is this. So if we're working on, so I'm having a student work on, really getting this feeling of this, because they're like a slide or something, so I want them to feel their hip going like this, right? So I may have them do this, do this three or four times, and I'll say, okay, start from here, and let's try to feel it down there, okay? And then maybe, maybe through there, uh, that's it. But we'll use a ratio, but I'm always checking it with some form of feedback to see if we did okay. All right, so we'll get more into exact practice routines or whatever, but the number one thing I believe people miss in their training is feedback because even if you're one of the, one of those at the range that rakes the ball okay now you rake it you just keep hitting and hitting now if you put some form of feedback there a mirror or this well then you'll have to stop doing it raking because you will have to either check the video or you're looking in the mirror for something so you know if you're you're visiting your golf coach there's going to be something you know you're working on so we need to feel it happen and until we have that, we need to know that we're doing it correct. We have great tools these days. We have 3D, Sportsbox AI I use with my students, where they can ch I can set it up for them to where, if let's just use, again, sliding this example, somebody goes back, pretty good takeaway, and then they're like this. Okay, so let's say that's about, I don't know, let's just make it up eight inches, okay? I can set a watch list on there to, to basically four inches, okay? So, when they take that video, they're gonna go like this and go, okay, I missed it at that four. So then it kind of gives them a gauge of here, here's what I'm trying to get within. And then you can work on that exact part so you can fix it. So uh, feedback is just key. And remember this finally, my last statement, if you're not using some form, form of feedback in your block practice, what are you doing? You're exercising. Thank you for watching. Eric Soar, EJS Golf and EJSGolf.com.